Hey everyone, the day is finally here. It's finally time for the Seed of Andromeda first pre-alpha release. You can grab a copy of the engine on uh, the NDDB website that I will link uh, in the description of the video. It should take you there. You can just download it. It's going to be a .zip file. All you got to do is grab 7-zip or something like that, extract it into a folder, and then run the Seed of Andromeda.exe, and the game should run. Right now, it is only for Windows uh, right now, it's not going to be for Mac yet. Uh, I wanted to get Mac support in, but I really just didn't have the time. Uh, there's also, I think, a, a pretty major bug for Windows 8. So if you have a Windows 8 computer, you may need to wait a week or so until I can actually get this fixed. I just got a Windows 8 laptop for Christmas, so I can actually test on a Windows 8 laptop and hopefully fix the bug pretty quick. So what can you do in this build? Well, it's not really a game yet. You can't craft, you can't fight enemies or anything like that. There's not a whole lot. You can play with physics and explosions and blow things up and... Go around and play with water physics. You can do all sorts of things. You can go spelunking in caves if you can find any. Uh, I've left all of the uh, dev little tools in. If you go to controls, it'll show you everything you can do. You can do things like show the uh, chunk grid and states and things like that. You can go to wireframe. You can do sonar vision. You can do pretty much everything I can do except touch the code right now. I wanted to give you guys this access to the game because uh, I know a lot of you have been following me for a long time and it really means a lot to me for you guys to uh, be following me and I really wanted to give you guys something to actually touch, something to actually play with. Uh, so, you know, you guys can help me find bugs and uh, suggest new features, things like that. There are going to be a lot of bugs. There's uh, some crash bugs I haven't quite found yet. I really want to find them. I haven't been able to make them reproducible right now. Uh, so if you guys can find a way to reproduce bugs, that would be really great. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to be putting a sticky post on the subreddit, which I'll also link in the description. Uh, if you go there, you'll be able to see all of the known bugs uh, sticky posted, and you'll be able to uh, post a comment on there saying any bugs you found. And whenever you find a bug, it's really helpful for me if you say uh, what you were doing when you caused the bug, and especially if you can get the bug to happen a whole bunch of times, if you can, if you can figure out how to reproduce the bug, if you tell me the, the uh, steps you did in order to cause that bug, that'll just make it a hell of a lot easier for me to actually find the bug. So yeah, I'm really excited for y'all to play it. Uh, oh, for, for those of you who have been watching the videos, uh, the new things since the last video are, of course, you've probably noticed, uh, new explosion physics. Uh, things work a lot better now with explosions. I think it looks cooler. Uh, you can now do better click-to-drag build. It looks a little better. You can actually break blocks now and things like that. Uh, you can uh, go to your inventory, grab some blocks. Blue crystal, you can click-drag like this and build things. It's pretty nice uh, for building things. There's not a blocks to choose from right now. Uh, I'll be putting out some new updates pretty soon. Uh, but to be honest with you guys, I've been working pretty hard for the past few weeks on the game. Uh, and most of my holiday right now has been spent just just programming, and I really want to uh, spend some time with my girlfriend and actually relax for a little bit. So probably for the next week or so, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot on the game. Maybe not much on the holiday uh, for maybe the next two weeks, really. Uh, but I do want to get started fixing all the bugs you guys find, adding Mac support, getting the world editor out, because no, the world editor is not quite ready for you guys. I would give it to you in its current state, but it's it's just really not ready. It's going to be changing too much for you guys to mess with it right now. Uh, what else? We'll litter all that. Multiplayer is going to be coming hopefully in a few months. Uh, I think I'm going to try to prioritize Mac support over over uh, multiplayer uh, since a lot of people are actually on Macs. Uh, it may take me a while to do Mac support. I've never actually uh, messed around with Mac support yet, so it could end up just being a nightmare. Um, if you are playing with low FPS, go here to Options menu. Um, the best thing to do is to take uh, horizontal chunks and lower it down a little bit. Uh, normal is 17. If you lower it to probably 15 or 13, you should get a, a pretty decent boost, or even less if you're getting pretty bad frame rates. You can also lower this LOD detail. It's default to high. If you have a great graphics card, go ahead and set it to ultra because it looks a lot better. You can see the difference right now. And if you have a butt graphics card, you can go to very low, but honestly, it's not even worth it. It's just awful. Kind of looks like India down there. Uh, so anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'm really excited for you all to get playing. Some of you probably have already started downloading it. Um, uh, one thing, when you do change these settings right here, uh, I just kind of just put this system in. If you do change these settings, you're going to have to restart the game. I didn't really have time to write the code to uh, resize the, the voxel world for you uh, and it not be buggy. So I just wanted to make it so that it was simple. If you change this, you'll get a pop-up saying that you need to restart the game. Restart the game, and then your new voxel chunk should be loaded. And... 
Anyways, yes, everything is persistent. All of your stuff should save. Now, of course, uh, it is multi-threaded saving, so there could be some uh, concurrency bugs going on. I'm pretty sure I got them all ironed out. Uh, but don't work too hard on your world saves right now. The uh, actual file format is definitely not final. So if you spend a whole lot of time making some massive build right now, I mean, there's not even a lot of blocks, so I don't know why you would really want to. Uh, in the future, it could get corrupted or something like that. You may want to just stick to playing around with physics, maybe building a few things and uploading pictures. Uh, if you guys take some really cool screenshots, definitely post them on the subreddit, and I'd be happy to put them on the internet. Um, let's see. Oh, also, a lot of people ask about uh, the technical stuff, like the world corners and things like that. Let me increase the uh, detail a little bit. Let's go too high. Okay, cool. A lot of people ask about uh, the eight world corners problem who've been watching my videos. If you go into wireframe with the M key, uh, you'll be able to see the actual faces of the cube, and you'll be able to see the distortion. If we zoom down here... Uh, with my little zoom feature. Oh, sorry, telephone. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, what what was I doing? What was I doing? Okay, yes, eight world corners problem. Uh, if you watched the video a while back talking about the tech stuff, uh, you will probably be curious about the eight world corners problem and the distortion. Uh, you can obviously tell right here that this is the corner of a cube. Uh, this is this is the corner of the world cube. This is one of the eight corners. If you fly down there, uh, there's no telling what ha what could happen. It might crash. Crazy things might happen. Uh, do it at your own risk. It's not going to be pretty because that's where the grid kind of breaks down. But, you know, do what you want. And you can also tell that the grid is oddly shaped. That is the distortion. So if I fly down here, just to make it obvious, this is not a bug. This is just the current state of the engine. It will be fixed. Let me fly down to this mountain right here. We'll make it nice and obvious. Uh, oh, goodness. Here we go. That actually does look like a bug. Nope, that was just the LOD loading in really slowly. So if we fly down here between these trees as I as I fly around you're gonna see that the terrain isn't really lining up very well at all and it actually kinda looks like the terrain is sliding as I move up I'm pretty close to the corner so this is probably almost the worst case uh, distortion uh, the trees kinda represent and the terrain represents what you see around you but it isn't exactly the same area as the far away LOD terrain so it causes this like sliding that you've probably seen in other videos. This isn't a bug. I do have a really good idea how to fix it. I'll use a second LOD terrain layer uh, to have a perfect seam right here. Like the, uh, the terrain will be perfect here, but then way further away it might be a little messed up. But you won't even notice it because it's so freaking far away. Like I could make the distance miles away. Like maybe that island would be slightly in the wrong place or something like that. But other than that, everything near you would look fine and it would just be great. So, uh, okay, I'm just rambling. Uh, what else? Anything else cool? Uh, there's probably a few things like that I've changed that I forgot to tell you. Mostly bug fixes, things like that. Um, just be sure to play around and have lots of fun and find all those bugs. Like, lighting bugs are definitely in there. Just check the sticky before you actually uh, post any bugs or anything like that because there's a good chance that the bug that you are reporting has already been found and will be fixed. Uh, don't worry. So stick with me through this long journey, turning this simple engine into an actual game and uh stay tuned next time guys thank you very much